Hi, thanks for joining us online. We're always so grateful for the opportunity to connect with you, whether you're a regular here at LBCC, or maybe you're a fellow follower of Jesus Christ, or someone looking to learn more about Jesus and Christianity in general. Well, as a church, our aim is simple. First, we want to connect you to Jesus. He is the God who is the source of all life and goodness. And when you're connected to him, your whole life will change. And when you connect to him, you'll find that he wants to connect you to others, which is our goal too. You see, community is God's idea. We didn't come up with it. It's right there from the beginning of the story of scripture. Secondly, we want to help you grow. Grow as a whole person. Uh, we want you to grow in your faith, obviously, and have a dynamic relationship with, with God through Jesus. But we want to see you grow in every aspect of your life. And part of that growth is when you join others on the journey of faith. There's something that happens when we work together, play together, and do things together that causes us to grow in relationship. And finally, we want to help you find ways to invest your life to be part of something bigger than yourself. You see, we were never meant to have life just be about us. It's really about learning to find a way to be part of something where you can impact the lives of others, whether it's your family at home, the people you work with in your neighborhood, your town or your city. We really want to see you get invested and impact your world. Now we hope you'll be encouraged by today's sermon, but first there's some information coming up here on upcoming events. Please look around our website, check out our YouTube channel, and hopefully we'll get to meet you sometime soon in person. God bless you and may God's best be for you. Thank you again for joining us online. Here are some of the ways you can connect, grow, and invest at LBCC. We host breakfasts for women and men on the second and fourth Saturday mornings of every month. You can sign up at lbcovenant.org slash welcome slash upcoming dash events. Also check out our life groups, a great way to meet and get to know us better. Some meet in person, others on Zoom either weekly or a couple of times a month. Of course, visit our website or call the office at 732-870-2028 to get info or ask for prayer. We'd love to help you in any way we are able. Now here's today's sermon. So... If you remember, we are going at it, trying to go real simple at it this year. We want to pursue God, and we want to pursue his purposes. Pretty simple stuff. And we want to do that and make sure that in our pursuit of God, we, we understand what his purposes are. And we don't just know them in our mind, but the goal of this series is to get us to get out of our comfort zones, get out of the box, and actually put some of it into practice, if not all of it into practice. And so we've looked at four different videos so far. The first week was called Open Our Eyes. And the idea was to look at the world around us and see the, the, how much they need the Lord, how the way things are. And I know all you have to do is look at the news and say, oh my goodness there. But we have the answer for what people are frustrated about, what they're hopeless about, what they're looking for. We have the true answer. And, and our second video was, was the, really the next logical step. It wasn't to strategize, it was to pray. And again, he's using uh, the book of Nehemiah for this. And Nehemiah knew that the place to start was to pray, that God would give him the strategy he needed. And we have to realize that we can't accomplish what we hope to accomplish in his name without his power. And so the place to start is, is prayer. I know it's changed, this series has changed the way I pray. I pray expecting God to give me opportunities now, expecting to see the things that I didn't see before and have the courage to step through and speak in those things. Our third video was to change our hearts. In fact, it was called Change My Cold Hard Heart. And that's because 
we don't always look at the people God loves that aren't part of his kingdom yet. We don't look at them the way he does. They're lost sheep is the way God tells the story. Jesus tells the story in, the, in, in one of his parables. And what I thought was so great about that talk was he said, the reason we want to take the gospel to them isn't because it's our duty, isn't because we feel guilty, it's because we see them with God's eyes, we have God's heart to them, and we care about eternity for them. It's not that we got to get them into church, it's we don't want them to live a good life and then spend eternity apart from God. And that's a serious thing, and, and that's why God sent his son. That's why God sent his son. And then last week, we looked at a very practical step toward this, and it's speak their language. Uh, just like a, a missionary that's going to go to a country that doesn't speak English, they're going to take time and learn, it, and learn the language of the country they're going to and the customs of the country they're going to. And the, we need to know that about the people we're spending time with. One of the groups last week, they began talking about this, and one young lady got up and began, began explaining today's terms to, to everybody in the group. And we're going to, I haven't spoken to her yet, but I'm going to ask her to make a video, and we can send it to all of you. Because you hear all these terms, and you think you know what they are, but maybe you don't. Now, today's video is another piece of the roadmap. We're going to look at, we're going to look at, um, Maybe the way to say it is, is an important challenge that we have, uh, connecting the message to our role as messenger. The second key aspect of relevance is we need to show people who Jesus is. So what do I mean by that? Well, in my context, in the band No Longer Music, we use theater, art, and special effects to depict a modern day life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. But not in a traditional way that you'd recognize, but contextualized for a secular audience. In our performance, a guy representing Jesus creates a guy and a girl. And the guy that he creates ends up abusing the girl. And we show this because this is real life. This is the kind of thing that people go through and we don't want to minimize that. But then the guy representing Jesus, he picks up the girl and he takes her to the front of the stage and he drops to his knees and he cries over her. And we show this because so many people think that if God does exist, he doesn't care, that he's far away and that he's indifferent. And we want to show people that that is not true. And finally, the guy representing Jesus, he gives his life for the girl. He sacrifices himself so she can be set free. And this whole time we've been demonstrating the gospel, but it's not until the very end that we verbally tell people what they have just seen. And it's amazing, we'll go out into the crowd and people will come up to us and say, you know, I'm not supposed to like this religious stuff, but what you show me, I want that. I wanna know this Jesus you're talking about. If we're gonna become relevant, we need to show people who Jesus is. We need to demonstrate his heart and character first and then tell them who he is. And you might be thinking, well, how am I supposed to do that? I'm not an artist. You may not be an artist, but you can point to someone that is. You can show someone a beautiful film or an amazing piece of music. And you can say, do you really believe that we are just highly evolved animals? That we're just the result of some explosion in the sky? Animals don't create beautiful art like this. Animals do not care about their families or justice or right or wrong. There are so many things in our world that screen the existence of God. If we would help people open their eyes, they would see that the gospel is everywhere that they look. And as followers of Jesus, it's on us to show them and then tell them. Another key aspect of showing people who Jesus is, is the example that we set with our lives. It's the salt and light principle. The idea that our actions and attitudes give authority to the message that we preach. The reality is as followers of Jesus, there should be some outward evidence of inward transformation. The world looks at us and it struggles with our hypocrisy. It hears what we say and then sees what we do and there's a large gap. I was driving home one day listening to sports radio uh, and the host came on and he was talking about all the terrible things that are said on Twitter. And the co-host jumped in and he said, you know what I often find? You'll read a terrible tweet and then you'll click on that person's profile and it'll say, father of three and follower of Jesus. 
And they were all laughing and talking about how that's so common. Those that claim to be the most religious are often the worst offenders. And this is so tragic. And of course, this is a misunderstanding of the gospel. It's not about me or my perfection. As Pastor Matt Chandler says, yeah, we are hypocrites and there's always room for more. But should there not be some outward evidence of inward transformation? When studies show that the lives of those that claim to follow Jesus look no different than those outside of the church, what does that say about us? I don't think that this is right. Our actions and attitudes are not the gospel, but the power of a life that first shows the gospel and then shares it, that is powerful. Finally, showing people who Jesus is, is focusing on the person and not the sin. Something I find truly bizarre is how we are so surprised that non-Christians act like it. We're so appalled by the things they say and the things they do and where. And so we go on Facebook and we go on our rants or we put bumper stickers on our car thinking we're making a difference. I think the world knows that we're against things. I'm just not sure if they know we're for anything. Jesus, by contrast, was incredibly merciful. He always went after the heart first, knowing that the behavior would follow. Perhaps the greatest example of this is the story of the woman caught in adultery in John 8. In this tragic story, a woman is caught doing a bad thing, and the Pharisees plan on killing her. But not only that, but they want to use her life in a ploy to trap Jesus. What would he do? Would he show her mercy, or would he uphold the law? They thought they had him caught, but of course, Jesus is far more brilliant than they are. And he says, if you've never sinned, go ahead and cast the first stone. Eventually, they all leave and he comes down on her level. He drives away her shame. And it's not until the very end that he says, now go and sin no more. The plan of the Pharisees would have led to her death, but Jesus, his way led to her life. Now we aren't told how the story ends. It doesn't say now she went on to live a perfect life, but that's not the point of the story. Jesus is modeling for us that we need to show mercy, that we need to go after the heart first, knowing that the behavior will follow. Jesus was always merciful with sinners like me and like you. It was only with the religious and the self-righteous that he was harsh. And if we're gonna be relevant, the world needs to know us not for the things we're against, but for our mercy.